you know, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Richard! <laughs> Yo, Will! I got you! If I... It doesn't have to be like this. I'm gonna be showing you exactly how I solved the hair growth problem for all black women. Healthy hair is a sign of good overall health. This is why long full hair is so desired. In our community, it's so important to understand that if your hair is constantly dry, brittle, constantly breaking, and you've tried everything under the sun and it's still not working, then this issue may be deeper than hair deep. Your body may just be trying to tell you that there's something wrong. So. Can I be real with you? And I mean really, really, really real, okay? Yes, products are great and I sell products, so it's in my best interest to sell you as much as I can. But do you know what the problem with that is? It may just be putting a band-aid on the issue. And I don't wanna be doing you guys a disservice when it comes to being your healthiest, best self this 2024. So one, we're gonna look deeper first, then we're gonna use great methods and products to maximize your hair growth potential. So based on current literature, as there are only three real reasons that you may be struggling to grow your hair or suffering hair loss. Number one is DHT. DHT is a hormone that is so much more potent than testosterone. And this hormone causes the hair follicles around the crown and your hairline to shrink and die. But with excess DHT, you can find so many natural remedies to block this excess production of it. And I will definitely list them all here. And now everything that I'm mentioning will be in the description bar. So definitely don't miss out on that. The second reason why you might be struggling to grow long, strong and healthy hair is your nutrition or lack there of it. But that's quite easily solved because quite frankly, you could up the nutrients in your diet. And this kind of feeds into the next point that I'm going to be making is the third reason why you may be struggling to grow long, strong and healthy hair is one thing called inflammation. With inflammation, it's a completely natural process, but it's the excess of inflammation that can cause so much hair loss. And with inflammation, it's very broad and it's not easily solved by one quick fix. So that's gonna be the basis of this video. So let's get right into it. Here are some signs of inflammation. Do you have any of these? Itching, flaking, acid reflux, gut issues, constipation, diarrhea, or sometimes when you're just on different medications. To find out the kind of hair loss you may be suffering with, I recommend you do the hair pull test. It's something you can do literally whilst you're watching this video. So gently pull, not tug, just gently pull at the top, the middle, right back side, right left side, and the nape of your neck. If you do this twice and you lose more than one hair, depending on where you lose the hair can kind of indicate what kind of hair loss you may be experiencing. If you're dealing with a nutritional loss, then you will notice that hair is falling out more from the sides of your head. If your hair loss is caused by excess DHT, then you'll certainly be losing it more so in the top of your head. With inflammation, it infects the entirety of the scalp. But if you're losing it at the bottom, then it's almost guaranteed you're losing hair from inflammation. The crazy thing is the causes of inflammation are so diverse. It could be stress, medications, your environment, allergies. And there are even some surprising ones like relaxers. Yes, hair relaxers. When you put that amount of chemicals onto your scalp, it causes immune malfunction and your body may actually become allergic to whatever you put on your scalp and then attack the surface of the scalp because of that malfunction. And when the body attacks it, it can cause scarring and can kill the actual hair follicles, which is so bad. Ultimately, relaxers can cause trauma on the scalp and can cause permanent hair loss. I hate to break it to you, but another surprising cause of inflammation in the body is chronic high blood sugar spikes. And before I know you're thinking, girl, I'm not changing my diet. 
You may not think it's a big deal, but with alopecia erectia, this is a type of inflammation of the body that targets hair follicles and causes them to die. And inflammation is not just a huge deal for hair growth, but just for your overall well-being and wanting to live a healthy and strong life. Because inflammation is a cause for so many diseases out there. And I know you're probably thinking, if there are so many causes of inflammation and I avoid the obvious ones like relaxers, you may be asking, how can I understand my body for myself and limit inflammation? And this is when I came across Zoe. This is not sponsored by the way. I just wanna share genuine ways I can actually help our community so that we can flourish and grow. Zoe focuses on personalized nutrition and their belief is that everyone has their unique biology because even identical twins share the exact same DNA, have very different responses to the same food. So quite literally, there is no one right way to eat. The key is understanding your own biology for yourself. So I used my own money and tried Zoe so I can understand my own biology and make it work for me. So if there's any way I can find out ways to limit the amount of excess inflammation in my body, I am all for it not just for hair growth but for my long-term health guys and i really encourage you to do just that so as i said before something you may not know is that the chronic blood sugar spikes just through having a diet that isn't quite good for your body may be causing excess inflammation in your body and with zoe you can actually test your blood sugar and see how your body responds to certain foods and you can also look at your gut microbiome your gut microbiome is something that I haven't yet touched on this channel but your gut is actually a system that is only just really being discovered now and what we're finding out in the science is that your gut is responsible for so many processes in your body in fact there's probably not one process in your body that doesn't involve your gut microbiome so if you're someone who has no idea what this is then definitely stay tuned I have to get changed because we mean business okay and why didn't you tell me my shirt was stained before just imagine this is the same day so now that you know that there are only three reasons why your hair may be not growing one which is excess dht that's easily solved by dht blockers two is nutrition and that's easily solved by eating a very varied diet and three lastly inflammation inflammation is the main cause for all diseases this ease in the body things like cancer diabetes cardiovascular diseases even alzheimer's so i know this video is about hair growth but i guarantee you that because healthy hair is a sign of overall health making sure that you are good internally will ensure that your hair flourishes so here are the fastest ways to reduce chronic inflammation right now number one is to prioritize sleep okay your body repairs itself when you're sleeping that includes regulating all that inflammation but if you didn't know when your sleep becomes interrupted and disturbed the genes that are associated with chronic inflammation are upregulated that's something you don't want number two is to exercise regularly oh you weren't supposed to see that. There are so many reasons to move your body, okay? So many reasons. But engaging in exercise is one of the single most important things you can do to reduce chronic inflammation, okay? It's pretty much the most significant lifestyle change you can make today, right now. Let's go. Number three is to eat anti-inflammatory foods. The foods you put into your body have a major impact on the inflammatory response. If your diet is full of inflammatory foods, it can contribute to low grade inflammation and eventually chronic inflammation and therefore disease and hair loss. So you wanna be avoiding sugar as much as you can, avoiding ultra processed foods. The foods that are in a package are most likely gonna be processed. Ultra processed foods, are stripped of their healthy antioxidant and fiber and they're packed with all these artificial sweeteners, preservatives, coloring. All these chemicals can literally trigger inflammation in the body. What you want to be opting for is anti-inflammatory foods, things like omega-3 fatty acid such as fish, walnut, flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds. They are high in omega-3 fats 
but they're also so high in antioxidants. The next thing is to focus on fiber. This is one of the most underrated food groups, I would say, when it comes to making sure that you have a very high anti-inflammatory diet. As I said before, your gut microbiome is something that is so crucial in your overall health and well-being because there's pretty much not one thing that happens in your body without including your gut. And with fiber, this actually feed the good microbes in your gut and these very bacteria can help to lower the inflammation in your body it's a no-brainer so you want to be munching on your fruits your vegetables your legumes your beans all these things are such an essential for reducing inflammation and reducing disease in the body and therefore having flourishing hair another thing that i love to do because i'm nigerian is to cook with spices honey okay cooking with spices doesn't just add flavor to your food it may also help with inflammation so this is one thing we may have in our nigerian community and here are 10 spices that have anti-inflammatory characteristics i'll list them all here things like turmeric of course, oregano, ginger, garlic, rosemary, even cinnamon and cumin. These are things that you probably have in your kitchen cupboard today, but you might not be including them as much as you could do, even if you can do it every single day. These are such great spices and herbs to lower your overall inflammation. Another one is to mind your mental health. I know this isn't easy guys, but you need to remember that with stress, it is not purely psychological, it is physiological, meaning that when you are stressed in your mind, you can also be stressed in your body because that's how your body deals with the stress. I remember when I gave birth to my first child, Kadara, and I was going through building the business of Mineral Naturals, cheeky plug, the stress was so much, the stress was so much so that my back was literally in pain, not because I was breastfeeding or anything like that, I literally felt a surge of my muscles cramping in my back whenever I felt really stressed. And that goes to show that when you are stressed psychologically, it can manifest in your body. So as we start this year, make sure you prioritize reducing stress in your life. And if that means cutting off people that are causing you stress, then that's okay. Another way to reduce inflammation is actually something that I've never even considered. And it's sauna. Did you know that there are so many benefits when it comes to using a sauna that goes beyond just relaxation? There's been growing bodies of research that suggests that regular sauna visit could help prevent and reduce chronic diseases through a variety of different biological mechanisms. One of which is through reducing inflammation. Do you see why I tell you that the main cause of disease in the body is inflammation. Sauna, the way it works, is reducing inflammation and that therefore has a knock-on effect to reduce disease within the body. These regular sweat sessions in the sauna have actually been associated with a reduction in these inflammatory markers within the blood. So if you haven't already, definitely book a sauna trip every single quarter if you have to. Your body, your mind and your hair will thank you for it. My last tip when it comes to limiting inflammation is to limit alcohol. My darlings, my darlings, please go easy on the alcohol. I know it's good to turn up, but what if that turning up is causing inflammation in the body and resulting in disease and lack of hair growth? Is the drink really worth it? Sometimes, all the lemonade. Alcohol literally triggers an inflammation response in the body. You wanna be drinking minimally or just avoiding it altogether to keep inflammation at bay. I'm at a point in life I don't remember the last time I even drank alcohol because I don't need it and what's really the purpose of it? If you can't enjoy yourself without drinking, perhaps we need to work on our personalities, eh? <laughs> so now that you have all these tools to make sure that you're reducing overall inflammation and working on your healthy lifestyle, comment down below your hair problems and I'm gonna be going through all of these and trying to make other videos on this. But as a whole, this video serves as my one-stop shop for tackling majority of hair care concerns. Of course, you can use great products, you can use great methods, but if the underlying cause of your hair loss is inflammation, chronic high blood sugar, chronic, all these bad things, then this video, you need to go and rewatch it and take tips as to how you can reduce your overall inflammation. I could be recommending you 
so many products and giving you so many methods of how to detangle your hair but guys i genuinely don't want to deceive you i would be doing you an absolute disservice if i only recommended products but didn't show you how your lifestyle can actually be contributing to your hair loss all of these things are so important and none of these should be neglected so if you have a good healthy lifestyle good products and good method then hair growth is definitely guaranteed so i've been janet and you guys have been amazing i'll catch you on the next one bye for now